My name is Dan Rogers. I'm old as dirt, do it despite my youthful look. And uh, this photo was shot, we just figured out. So this photo was shot probably in January or February maybe of 93. And at the time, skateboarding was dead broke. So photo incentive was like a kind of a big part of our way to like, you know, pay rent, <laughs> like buy Taco Bell, live at Denny's. Like, so that's why there's a big shirt that I have on. It's this big logo that no one knows what it is, but it's called Fat Clown. And originally it was a, it was a company that Matt Hensley was kind of the face of it. Oh. But truth be told, he probably really wasn't. It was kind of like out of the picture by the time I got on it and stuff. But um, Nate Shagavy is the one who connected. That's so weird. So Nate Shaggy is my friend of Minnesota who we were talking about earlier. And he actually connected me with Fat Clown. And this dude, Ken Park yeah. and Matt Hensley were supposed to be owned it. And at the time, they paid money and gave great photo incentive deals. So this cover got me a grand when riding for a board company back then got you 500 bucks a month or <laughs> whatever, you know? So, and this was Blockhead? This, 93? It's either Blockhead, it might be Birdhouse. Okay. This is Birdhouse. Okay. So if I'm, yeah, if I'm riding spring of 93 with Birdhouse for sure. Okay. Yeah. So, or maybe about to quit. God, that's a good question. It might be right in between. Okay. So I probably quit Blockhead right after this cover came out. Now that you say that interesting trippy but so grant britain was my favorite and um grant and i met organically just i was skating the school called viking school in carlsbad and markovich was there so grant was there to shoot chris uh, and chris was trying to big flip down five stairs and he couldn't do it you know at that time bales were just part of life <laughs> you know what i mean then he was whatever he's skating over here and then next to it was this crazy like flat bar as high as this table and for whatever reason that seemed like something to skate to me and i was like grinding it and grant i guess was like shooting chris was like looking over what's this freak doing over here you know it's a weird dude and then so he came over and that was actually the first photo that i shot with grant and that's how we met okay so from that moment on though grant was my guy you know what i mean i would never shoot anything with anyone else years and then uh thrasher included which is kind of like a vibe too yeah so like anyway <laughs> so this cover happened um because i had gotten you know pseudo popular or whatever and i was grant's boy grant's the editor so i'm sure there's some favor there that came into play but uh far more deserving people to be on the cover of mags um but i was lucky enough to be good boys with grant and i could jump on rails and at the time, he basically tricked me. He was like, oh, I have this thing. I want to shoot, wear something bright. And I'm like, all right, well, what is it? Oh, it's like this rail. And how high is it? Oh, it's not that high. Is it steps or is it a ramp or is it grab? What is it? Oh, it's just on a sidewalk. And there's grass on one. And I go, is there grass on one side? Yeah. And I'm just like, all right, dude, what time do you want me to be there? So I go there and Grant takes me to this fucking thing. It's like a rail down a hall with a curve that like tons of people have skated it since, like Heath skated it, Figgy skated it, um, but it's not safe at all for 1993, yeah. the way Grant made it sound. But at the time that was like, falls into my wheelhouse, you know? So I did it like, I wanna say I tried it maybe 12, 13 times and I probably made it like four times. But I kept like those curves, so when I would board slide it, and at first I was coming off, too much at that angle and then what clip my wheel and just get chucked into this retaining wall that you can't really see yeah. but um but yeah it was rad and, but it's really curved and grant shot it with a fish eye so it kind of straightens the rail out and it makes my head look like i have some mongoloid eskimo head or something <laughs> i don't even know if i'm allowed to say that without getting canceled anymore about where was eskimo. where would the footage end up it's a funny thing you say even film it didn't film it okay so that was pure photo like nice. i didn't think it was a big deal didn't bring a filmer fucking whatever like for free basically <laughs> went there and shot it and then never went back and filmed it because i didn't think it was a big deal yeah well which is so strange and
you know, so this was your first cover, ends up being your only cover. How did that affect not your... Not true. Not true. By the cover of Action Sports Magazine. Transfer, I think, made that too, right? Uh, you mean the business journal? Yeah. Oh, okay. So there's like another one, but all before this even. So there was, oh, sorry, when Grant and I met and started working together, I probably shot, I don't know, 42 photos in a week. It seemed that way. It was, it was gross, kind of, like... Cool poster boy, magazine prostitute, <laughs> like yeah. everything. So that's how that other cover happened. And then um, I think there's another cover somewhere. Europe, maybe. maybe. I don't know. But that's the only Thrasher and Transworld. This is the only one. Yeah. And how? So how did this did this lead to other clothing sponsors or any oh. other shoot help get uh, increase your salary anywhere? Yeah. Or? No. I mean, it was like the blessing and the curse you know we always joke like don't shoot an interview and don't shoot a cover because the minute you do it like I don't know why but it, like it puts you in like a complacency position mm -hmm. kind of you know because you feel like you I mean, you did accomplish something right? yeah, but great. like you feel like typically a cover or an interview goes along with a big video part yeah. you probably nowadays it's when you turn pro but back then it was just something you did every year and Usually your gas tank was empty. <laughs> By the time the mag came out, the interview came out, you're just like exhausted. Like, which is you never talked in this way in the '90s, which is really weird. That like the industry people. I mean, they're all just young too, right? Like mm -hmm. that was when skateboarding took over skateboarding, and no one knew what the fuck they were doing. Like no one had a clue of how to treat riders, like how to even market them. It was just go film a video part, we'll shoot photos, but no one really got it. You yeah. Know? Um, but at that time, like no one understood the, the, the ups and downs emotionally and physically of the act of skating. Like no one's really talked about, oh, if you're Heath and you go out and fill apart, you hit your face so fucking hard, your face turns green <laughs> for three weeks. Like you probably have some emotional like baggage to unpack of what you had to do to get yourself to that part. Right. You know, like if you're a modern day, you know, Nigel running around in booty shorts, skating the sketchiest shit ever, when you're done filming, like you need to like decompress. And, <laughs> you know, the whatever, I don't want to say a board company owner's name, but chances are George Powell doesn't understand that. Or whoever, you know right. what I mean? Like a dude's not gonna like get it. and. You know, with hindsight, looking back, you're like, oh yeah, they probably should have like planned for those things a little better and knew that the skater was gonna take basically nine months off yeah. or something like that. You know, right. not everyone does that. If you're a day one song, yeah, fuck, dude. Fell apart every 15 minutes. <laughs> who, uh, who received this particular magazine? Oh, so somehow I look at the name and you know, you're all stuck like, check out whose it was. This is my buddy, Jim Thebos. <laughs> Fucking mayor of mayor slash Mother Teresa of skateboarding. <laughs> like, raddest dude. I know everyone has an opinion, but Jim, how do I put this? Don't come up there. So, because Jim takes the time to take the extra step to make skateboarding as culturally impacted with the things that he does with his brands, to me, makes him. I don't want to say, you know, financially, that doesn't matter to me, but he's the most influential kind of company owner that we have going today. The simple fact that he's the only one that doesn't sell direct to consumer and doesn't compete directly with shops, yeah, that's all is. you need to know. He's it the is. only one. And all of his contemporaries shake their head and roll their eyes and whatever, but the fact is that he doesn't do it. And he gives back to skate shops. And as you get old and appreciate skating more, that's a big fucking deal, kids. Let's talk about some uh, classic covers that were influential in your early life as a skateboarder. Anything stick out in your head? So, you're talking about pre-California? Early, early days, or even anything that influenced you or just stands out in your mind? Because what's weird, before you make it in skating, you're a fan of skating. Sure. So you appreciate and you're impacted and you're like developing as a skater and a person. So. When you see Matt Hensley doing a melon to fakey at Sample Squall with cracks in the ground, chain wall and the short, it's fucking burnt into your hard drive forever. You know, when you see Nottis 
sitting there with his hair flowing. It, it's just the raddest, right? Like the cover, the white cover of Tramp World, not as good in the tuck knee. With the floral pants on, that's something that was like, was, it was like stop everything. <laughs> like what? Like, so those covers in the early days, you know, it's funny. So we were just talking about Roscoff a second ago. When I was a kid, I knew I'd been skating barely at all. I knew that fucking cover was whack with snowboarding. Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was. Even when I was a kid, I was like, snowboarding? Who the fuck cares about snowboarding? Like, well, and I was a funny kid in Iowa, and I didn't like it. Most people don't even realize that is Roscoff. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So that was like, even I knew that was a weird cover. Um, trying new things. But, you know, the very first cover, my first magazine and cover that will always be burnt is the Mark Rosales interview, 86, September Fresh. That was my first mag, too. First mag? <laughs> yeah. And it's doing it almost the wrong way. Yeah. I'm not ignoring you, I'm dead, or whatever, you know, like, sticker. Brainwash so victim. Was, those covers, to me, or those in my head, I remember those things. But you remember the mag shots, too. Covers were rad, but, and I had them on my wall. So like, if I'm just thinking of my bedroom right now as a kid, I can see Gator's cover in a white pool grinding, right? And not really understanding yeah. how hard a backyard pool is to skate, but knowing that that was rad. Yeah. Like, yeah. So fantastic, Dan. I think that about covers it. Thanks for getting together with us. No, no, for sure. Thanks for finally, finally making it happen. Yeah, here we are. Thanks, Kevin. <laughs>